Hi everybody, it's a little bit of a dark and dingy day today so apologies in advance if the lighting's a little bit off and I am actually filming a little bit later than usual as well today because I wanted to get this image finished first so I could show this to you before I went on to what I'm going to show you today and it's a tiny little bit unplanned uh, I know there is a couple of tutorials that I do have in the works and I'm supposed to be working on those but I have been really busy on other things because Josh Lee actually got in touch with me on Facebook and he asked me to colour a couple of pictures for him for his new set of pictures that have just come out and they're actually of Philippines gods and goddesses. If you follow me on Instagram you will have already seen the first one. This is the second. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her name. Um, Ikapati. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, she's actually the goddess of uh, cultivated lands and the goddess of the harvest pretty much. So um, this is how I've actually coloured her in. I'll put a link to where you can download these pictures in the description below if anybody is interested. There is quite a few of them and they're all lovely images. I do love Jashley. Um, so yeah, I was really a little bit excited when he got in touch with me and wanted me to colour in some pictures for him. So this is what I've been working on. She's actually taken nearly two weeks just to colour this one um, with all the, the detail in the background and trying to figure out how to make things look like they were fading away into the distance there. As backgrounds really aren't my, my forte, <laughs> if you'll have followed my videos, you'll know that especially leaves and foliage so I was really really proud of myself for getting those done and what I wanted to do on this one to try and make it look more kind of powerful and goddessy <laughs> if that's even a word I tried to make these um tattoos that she's got make those look as if they're glowing slightly with this green kind of tinge she's the goddess of um like produce and harvest and growing so I wanted it to her tattoos to be glowing kind of green and I'm really quite pleased with how they've turned out. Maybe not glowing as much as I would have hoped they would but this is the effect that I wanted to try and show you today. These kind of green glowing tattoos. I thought maybe it might spark a few ideas for people if nothing else and you can you can play around with colours obviously they don't have to be blue as long as it's a really bright saturated colour I think maybe it should work and leaving the white in the middle but I'll show you how I got that effect and the colours I used to shade this skin tone as well because Josh wanted her coloured as a traditional kind of Philippines lady so I've tried to give her the slightly darker skin tone with the glowing tattoos and uh, that's what I want to try and show you today. And uh, the effect did seem to work where the tattoos were bigger on her leg here and these ones on her tummy. So what I thought I would try and do instead of printing this image out again to try and show you with the fiddly little tattoos, I've actually found another lady that I think will work. This is The Women of Tua by Lisa Johanna or Johanna and the lady that I've chosen to try and show this effect on is this lady here. As you can see she has these markings on her face slightly larger that I think I might be able to get to work in the same kind of way. I've coloured her skin and her hair just with a marker base, the same marker base that I used for my goddess. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, I'm sorry, but the same colours that I use for my goddess. Her hair is shaded with a PB11, that is marine blue, the Ahuhu marker, and her skin is shaded with E210, the brick beige um, Ahuhu marker to try and get that slightly darker Philippines kind of skin tone that Josh wanted. So I'm going to work with those. I might actually make her skin a little bit darker than in the first image to try and get those tattoos to really look as if they're glowing. We'll see what we can come up with. I've just got the same colours I was using when I was working on my goddess. I'm going to try and see what we can make happen. And so I'll zoom us in and uh, we'll get started. All right, there we are in a little bit closer now. And when I was colouring my goddess, I started actually with the tattoos. Instead of doing her skin first, I started with the tattoos and I wanted those to be green and kind of glowing. As she's the goddess of farming, harvest, that kind of stuff. So I wanted it to be glowing green to like represent the growing plants. And the colours that I was using for the main tattoo, I have pear green. These are all Arteza. Pear green A603. I have matcha green, which is more for the reflection onto the skin that I was using that one for. And I also have sapphire yellow, which is A101. And those were the main colours I was using for the tattoos themselves. I was starting with the pear green, which is one of my favourite colours um, of green in that set. And uh, keep it to the edges of these markings or the tattoos that I'm trying to make those into. I'm not entirely sure if this lady is a goddess. 
she's going to have glowing green tattoos. It can be used on anything. Just as I usually do, I play with the effect and see what it can be used for. And uh, as it seemed to work quite well in my original picture of the goddess, I thought maybe you guys might be interested in seeing how I actually achieved it. And it's a fun little thing to try anyways. I do love playing with uh, glows and lighting and stuff like that. So yeah. I thought maybe it might make an interesting video, seeing as I haven't uh, really had time to be working on anything else this week. There we go, just going around the edges of the tattoos like that. And because I want to have these glowing, they will be casting light onto this, this hair of hers here. So I was adding a little bit of green whenever anything was close enough to the tattoos. To be actually reflecting the light. I'm going to be calling these tattoos. I think they are tribal kind of markings, but for my intents and purposes, they are tattoos, so I'll call them tattoos. Those um, strands of hair there are fairly close to the tattoos, so I'll bring the green in there. And I was also bringing in the sapphire yellow to make it look as if the, the glow is kind of coming from the middle, which is what I want to be the white of the paper in the middle there. And in theory, apart from the white gel pen, which I'll probably bring in as well, um, you want that to be the only white, you want that to be the only white in the image. And uh, I did use white for the clothes for my goddess, but I did actually shade it with a, a very pale grey marker. And I did lots of actual grey shading on the clothes themselves. I'll just bring the original lady in for a little bit. The white is actually not really white, it's grey, because I wanted this white in the middle of the tattoos to be basically the only white paper left in the image. So that makes the tattoos um, look as if they're glowing a little bit more, I thought. So yeah, even though her clothes are white, it's mainly grey. Um, it's even the back, the background of the white areas of her clothing is of the lightest grey in the Ahuhu pack. Very, very light, cool grey. And I worked on top of that with other greys and uh, blended with a little bit of the white and added these little green highlights in anywhere where I thought that then the light from the tattoos might be reflecting. It was, yeah, as usual, my first time trying. I do love to experiment and play around. So yeah, that was my first time trying any kind of effect like this. And I do love doing it. See, I've wandered off and started doing these designs on her cheek now. But yeah, the same thing. The, the outline of the tattoo is the pear green and then a little tiny bit of the, the yellow kind of blending that green into the middle. There we go. I won't colour her whole face, I'll just try and show you how I was getting the effect, that's the whole point of the video. And because, as I've said, these are supposed to be glowing, I started onto the skin with um, also a little bit of the pear green. Because we want the light to be glowing from those tattoos onto her skin, almost like a neon kind of sign sort of effect and the reason yeah I'm showing you guys is so maybe you can run with the idea try it out yourself add little variations on it as I said they doesn't have to be green that was mainly to match with the theme of the goddess who's linked to farming and agriculture, the harvest, that kind of stuff. So it was just to fit in with her theme. It could be any colour really, maybe a nice bright kind of turquoise, cobalt blue. That would work really well. And because we want her skin to be fairly dark... My goddess was a lady from the Philippines, her skin was slightly darker. But this lady I might go even more darker, we'll see how we get on. This is the matcha green that I used. To try and blend that 
lighter pear green into the actual skin colour. There we go, and the first colour, surprisingly, that I used for shading her skin, this is Camel Brown, A300 I think that says, Camel Brown. That was the first, that was the first pencil that I was using to shade her skin. Though, as I did mention with this lady, I might try and go a little bit darker just to see if that helps the tattoos or markings stand out a little bit more. I did say I was just going to call them tattoos, didn't I? <laughs> yep, just to see if that will make the, the glowing lines stand out a little bit more. But yeah, the first colour I was using was this camel brown. It's a kind of yellowy tan colour. I'm just shading as I would normally shade. I've just brought over all the pencils I had out that I was working on with my goddess and um, usually I just play around until I find something that actually looks right so no specific kind of step by step way that I can really explain it. I usually just play around, lay the colours Add whichever I think would work best. But at least if um, I show you how I shaded maybe this little bit here, you can see how the actual effect, how I got that effect. And I've no idea whether I will actually finish the picture off. It's a fairly simple one, so maybe I'll finish this off. But yeah, as I said, I, I haven't managed to get a whole lot of my own colouring done this month. Um, I've only done the one picture that actually fits with my theme because um, the, because Josh did ask me specifically to colour a couple of pictures for him so I wanted to really bring my A game for those and uh, yeah, make sure I did the best job that I could. So I did take my time and most of the month has been taken with colouring those two pictures. Aside from the, the labyrinth picture that I coloured actually on camera. There we go, this with the Camel Brown. That was the Arteza Camel Brown. Then we have the Yellow Ochre from Castle Arts. I do mix my pencils as I've said before. And this is how I was shading on my goddess with the who was a Filipina lady. So her skin was kind of medium. Not super dark. Her skin was kind of tan more than anything so yeah I might make this skin a little bit darker as I've said a couple of times to see if we can make those tattoos come out stand out a little bit more be quite fun to try this, try this maybe on tan paper or um, something like that and actually add in the white and have that be the only white on, on the picture see how that would work Something I might play around with in future because yeah, if you it depends how many other outside light sources you have, how dark that would be going. How dark the rest of the picture would be going. This is this is raw amber from Arteza. I can't quite read the number there. Could be three oh two, but I will try and put all the numbers of the pencils down in the description. Adding a shadow under her chin. And keeping the darker colours further away from that. If we're treating these tattoos as a light source, we will keep our darkest colours furthest away. Because this tattoo would in theory be, <laughs> be lighting up this area of her skin here. So let's bring in the darkest colours into the where the darkest shadows would be. And these are just the first layers. Yep, you can add as many layers, as little layers as you want. As usual, it's all you. <laughs> it's all personal preference. I'm just trying to give a kind of idea of something that you could maybe try. I was blending these colours with the cream of the Arteza. And normally I would use the cream, the actual colouring pencil, but this one is the watercolour pencil because my cream ran out. I used it so much <laughs> and I couldn't get them on 
I couldn't get them on open stock, but I could get these watercolour pencils. So this is the watercolour cream. Just blending those skin tones a little bit, but you can work on it as much as you want, as little as you want. As I've said, that's that's pretty much always the case. That's all blended with the cream. And the last step for for the actual tattoos is to go over the line art with the white gel pen. This one is not great. <laughs> Maybe I need to break out another white gel pen. This is the one I was actually using though. I've just brought over the same pencils that I was using. So I was colouring over on the couch earlier. Yeah, this, this pen is not happy. So I'll break out a new one. For the sake of the video, I'll break out a new one. Yeah, there we go. It's covering smoothly now. Just covering this line up. This is unfortunately Amazon paper and uh, the lady that I did colour earlier, she was co copied onto my own paper, the usual sketchbook paper that I used to copy my pictures onto. She was copied onto that paper, so yeah, this, this effect will probably work differently. I'll go over this one as well. This effect will probably work differently on the Amazon paper. But I think in this book the paper did take the Arteza pencils and the Castle Art pencils, so that's what I'm going with. And try bringing in some very deep shadows over here with the Castle Art pen number. And there would be a highlight on her chin there. That will probably bring in with the white gel pen as well. Maybe even the white pencil. I'm adding a bit of shadow to the side of her, her braid there because these tattoos are not going to be the only light source in the picture because that would be a really dim light source. Although, yeah, that is a fun idea that could possibly be played around with. This is raw umber from our teaser. And yeah, the, the pencils don't lay out as well on this Amazon paper. But at least I can get... Hopefully the idea of what I was going for. This is the white Arteza because I find it blends a little bit better than the polychromous white. I do keep meaning to buy a Prismacolor white and see how well that would blend. But yeah, as this is Amazon paper, I doubt things would blend <laughs> super well. This was about the only other lady I could find that might possibly work for this technique, so. And I didn't really have a lot of time to be copying her, scanning her, and getting a good scan, copying her onto my own paper, so I'm working with what I've got. Can use that white to highlight her hair there, so that light would be shining I'm gonna try bringing in a little bit of that yellow I'm going to try and bring in that that light kind of reflection more into the skin color To really play up the idea that these tattoos are, are lit up. This is yellow ochre from Castle Arts. I'm thinking maybe if we leave that marker, that is the brick page, if we leave that marker as the actual highlight colour along that side of her neck and just try and blend these skin colours so we're getting paler towards the middle there I had hoped to make her skin maybe a little bit darker than I was working with earlier but I don't think this paper is going to take it tons of layers Let's have another try of blending those skin colours. So onto the other side. 
And this other side here is pretty far away from any of the glow, so I'm going to make these shadows fairly dark. And this side of her chin, behind the flower and where her hair comes in. As if our, if our light source, the daylight, if you will, is coming from this side, then we would have her shadows down this side of her face. Or neck, rather. This is her neck, not her face, right? We'll have more of the darker colours down this side. I also have a cocoa brown here from Arteza. Maybe we could bring that in. That might work in these shadows as well. Let's see. <laughs> As usual, playing around to see what we can make happen. It's the usual way I work. <laughs> Here we have the raw umber. They're coming down in the shades, coming lighter towards the middle where that tattoo will be glowing, hopefully. Into the lighter colours there. And in the yellow ochre from Castle Art. I don't want to make her skin too dark, but I do want to try and make it a little bit darker than my goddess had her skin, just to see if that helps make these tattoos look as if they are shining. First, bringing in the cream colour to blend. And then the white, the Arteza white. Although, of course, yeah, as usual, you really don't need to bring in anything to blend. This is just kind of a, a shortcut, really. And it's easier than trying to layer a lot on the Amazon paper, for me at least. But I'm sure you all have your own ways of uh, blending your pencils. Mainly blending the, the outer edges there into the marker base kind of skin colour. And playing with these colours, going back to the cocoa brown, I think this one was. Playing with the colours until you're satisfied with how the how the blends are looking. This might work quite well it's on really light skin also, thinking about it. Might be something I play about with in the future. As I said, I do love I do love playing with glowing, glowing kind of effects. Not sure I always get them quite right, but the fun is in the playing with it and the practice. Helps makes perfect, right? Practice makes perfect. Did I say this was the raw umber? Yeah, raw umber from Arteza. Please excuse my, my croaking voice a little bit there. Yeah, it's definitely cough and cold season again. Just trying a little more blending with that white. Just to make it so I'm happy with how it looks. Considering it's Amazon paper. And this is a little bit of a simplified, more of a simplified drawing. Not so much detail as my goddess earlier, so we don't need to be too delicate with details. We don't need to be as delicate with details anyways. There we go, that's looking pretty good, I think. For black hair, I've given her a base of the marine blue. I like to give it a base of a blue kind of colour, maybe a cool grey or blue if I'm going to do black hair. This is Polychromos Black. There are a few kind of hair strand lines drawn in for us, so we can use those. A little bit of black under her chin. Just pressing very, very gently there. 
not too bad. It is getting really dark outside, so hopefully the lighting is holding up. I will try and adjust in uh, in editing. Try and keep it so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. But I'm just shading there with the with the black over the marine blue marker. And these parts of her here, where the light is shining, we'll be adding some white gel pen highlights. And the colours I've got out here to actually shade the black are ones that I did use in my labyrinth picture. This is Castellat's Cold Cool Grey Deep. And I have the Dove Grey. This will be a, not quite as drastic a highlight as the white would make, but still give us a yeah, little bit of highlight there. And you can always bring in the, the indigo light, a little touch of the blue, especially where this light will be hitting to give those blue highlights into this shiny black hair. And once we're past where that tattoo would be shining, then there would be less drastic highlights for the hair. I've also found as well, if you want to make something look as if it's really close to the light, the light is really shining on it, then go over the... What I found works quite well to go over the actual line art in the places where the very bright highlights would be. Just to make it look as if, yeah, you do have... A very very bright highlight here, such as here where the tattoo is actually super close to the hair. Actually going over the going over the outline there. I think helps quite a lot. We might have a tiny bit of highlight there, but not so much that the outline would be white, I don't think, so I'm using the sapphire yellow there. I'll bring in a little bit of a pear green. And yeah, I'm I'm kind of guessing as to where would be shining with this light, whereas whereabouts is close enough to be getting the the green light reflecting. So yeah, I think we would have a tiny bit of highlight there, but not as much as on the edge, so I won't go over the actual line art. Just give a very slight highlight there, because we're moving further away, so there would be less of a highlight. Bringing in the cool grey. And then the dove grey. For those less, kind of less noticeable I suppose is the word. <laughs> Less drastic highlights anyway, so further further away from the light you would be getting, the less drastic the highlights would be. Although if we do have other light sources then there might be highlights maybe along this edge, but not quite as drastic as those, maybe going in with a white pencil. Just to show them his other light sources, but because we haven't got that green, there we go. Just to show there might be another light source coming from that side. Although, if this green and glowing tattoos is the only light source in the actual picture, everything else would be very, very dark. And that might be quite an interesting way to go about it. Might be another interesting way to try and play with this idea. I do like to take take the main uh, kind of basis of an idea and run with it try different ways to use it and they don't all work i will say that they do not all work but i do have fun playing around with different ideas i do love playing with light sources i think maybe the outside the outside here would maybe get a little bit of a glow because this would be in the shadow behind her neck I'd get maybe a little bit here maybe in shadow maybe here 
but yeah, I'm no expert on where they would be shining, so and this is all my best guess. The parts of her hair that would be closest to that kind of glowy tattoo we've got going on on her neck there. But I think the reflected, the reflected light like that does kind of enhance the effect that the tattoo is actually glowing, I think. And if we make sure that that, that white paper that we've left in the middle of the tattoo, that is the only white, apart from these extra stark highlights here, that is about the only white in the image, then that will look as if it is glowing. And this is white pencil here, but because that's over, that's fairly transparent and that's over the top of this marker, that's not a very stark white. It's just a little kind of hint of a highlight there. Might be a little bit there. I should sharpen this white, but there's not a lot of white left to actually be sharpening. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really wish I could get this at uh, open stock. Yeah, that should be. Should be reflecting the light there as well, I think. Needle on that one. That looks right, so I'm going to go with it. Bring in a little bit of that pear green. Some emo. whatever colour you want your glue to be. As I said, it doesn't really have to be green. It's not <laughs> Green is not one of my favourite colours. But it did go with the theme of the picture, so I went for it and yeah, it worked. Saying that though, I do love that pear green. <laughs> it's a very yellowy, limey green. Bring in the dove grey for this. These parts that are further away from the light. Maybe blend it into that green a little bit. And we possibly have a few of the white highlights around here where the, where the light might be reflecting a touch. As this hair comes away from the tattoos, closer to the bottom of the picture, you would have a lot less of that reflected light from the tattoos. So we'll be going back to maybe the dove grey or the white pencil even, or a few highlights. And that white gel pen will probably pick up the blue from underneath and turn it turn into a, a lighter sort of blue-grey colour maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I think it does pick up this marker very slightly to tone it down a very light touch, but I think that will kind of work in our favour because the highlights on the hair are not going to be as bright as the actual light itself, so it will probably work in our favour <laughs> if we're lucky. I'm not entirely sure if I will go ahead and finish this one off. I might do, seeing as it's a very pretty simple image. I won't colour the whole image on camera. It's just, just a very brief explanation of how I got the effect with my goddess. On the background, around here, I think that would possibly... Oops, are we on camera? <laughs> this would probably be at least a fairly desaturated colour. Not quite as dark as her hair. We do want her hair to be standing out still. So I'd say maybe a mid-tone, sort of desaturated colour of some sort. And if we do want the glowy, kind of glowy tattoos to be the focus, then not so much fiddly detail in the background, just something pretty simple. But the main point of this video today was to try and show how I got that glowing effect. And I think, yeah, we do seem to have that working. <laughs> so, yay! Mission accomplished. Maybe give a little bit of inspiration. Things you can do. 
I'll just finish off this braid so you can see that the colour would get darker down towards the bottom here. I'm thinking maybe if I keep the gel pen to the areas that would be having this light reflect onto it, then yeah, that would help. Although this is me trying to trying to stop using white gel pen. Yeah. Time will tell if that would be successful if I do go ahead and finish this picture. Bit of light indigo around these paler highlights that we've got going on here. Just bringing in the white pencil with a little bit more. Slightly brighter highlights down here. And this is the polychromos black. I'm not sure I mentioned that. But yeah, any black I use is most likely the polychromos black these days. I think I'll leave it at that before I get carried away and end up coloring the whole picture because I still need to upload this and edit and all that kind of good stuff. So hopefully that's given you all an idea of how I did get that effect that I had in my goddess image. I'll zoom us out and we can see both pictures side by side. There we go. I've kind of put the both the pictures side by side there so you can see this effect is the same as this effect I've showed you today. Although I did try and make this skin slightly darker over here to try and make those tattoos really stand out as being glowing. And yeah, I think that <laughs> that's been quite effective there. This one does have a lot more going on in the background and I couldn't really make it super dark. So it will be interesting if I do carry on and finish this picture, try and make that background darker and see if I can really make those tattoos look as if they stand out to be glowing. If I went ahead and shaded her face, I would just shade it as I would normally, but around any of these tattoos or, or markings, I would try and blend out that light into the normal skin tone to make it look as if those tattoos were glowing and have the light reflecting onto anything that I think is maybe close enough to get a little bit of that reflected light although a lot of that would be guesswork just wherever it seems to look right it seems to have worked quite well for this hair here although I think maybe we could have gone for a little bit of the green yeah that's a little bit better Looking at it a little bit further away, that's a little bit better with the green there. Hopefully that is showing up on the camera. I'm trying to be a little bit arty with my pencils to keep this page, keep this page flat. I haven't had a chance to flatten that yet as I did only finish her first thing this morning. But there we go. Hopefully that was helpful to some people. A little bit of an idea that you can run with and try out yourself. See if, see what different effects you can get with that. So thank you for watching everyone. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing and take care everyone. I'll see you in future videos.